Tennessee reportedly is being investigated again by the NCAA. I know what you're thinking to yourself. Josh, this is old news. They were already being investigated. No, friends, this is a new investigation. It's the investigation after the investigation. And this was reported earlier on today by Sports Illustrated, and it has since been verified nine ways from Sunday. We even got a reply from Dondi Plowman, the chancellor there at Tennessee. As a general rule on this show, we have learned not to take NCAA investigations seriously, but that doesn't mean... I think a lot of schools have got hit with or getting or about to get hit with uh, NCAA NIL violations, uh, focus on private private jets, having boosters pay for trips is a violation of the NCAA rule. The New York Times to recruit uh, Nico. And they're not real. It's just I don't put a whole lot of credence in them. I don't take them seriously because I don't take these people seriously. <laughs> I am very pro enforcement. Don't get me wrong. I'm very pro rules and guidelines. Very, notice the, the wording here, very clearly defined enforceable guidelines. Your boy is all for them. Pate State's never been investigated. Okay, I'm all for them. That is not what these people do. That's not what these people are about. So we had that news come out, oh, mid to late morning, I would say, Jesse and Colin. And then uh, the powers that be there in Knoxville, they went and got a Caesar salad for lunch. They came back to the office and they said, bring me the blowtorch. Dondi Don Plowman said, bring me the blowtorch. So Dondi Plowman is the chancellor at Tennessee. Uh, this is a woman who has ascended to her position through things like merit and hard work. She's very smart, very cerebral, fiercely loyal, and will defend her university if necessary. So naturally, she eviscerated these people today because they fit none of those characteristics. So shortly Earlier today, a team from the University of Tennessee met with members of their enforcement staff to discuss allegations. Discuss allegations the NCAA intends to bring against Tennessee related to NIL. How legitimate do you think these allegations are? And what do you think the potential ramifications of these allegations will be in the long run? Y'all let me know in the comments below after we got word that they were being investigated before a notice of infractions had been sent to the university mind you which means a mouthpiece had to report it at the behest of the ncaa shortly after we got that this morning we got this from Dondi plowman in response hey, anytime josh pate clapped them papers on the table he about to drop a bomb on you watch this quote earlier today a team from the University of Tennessee met with members of your enforcement staff to discuss allegations the NCAA intends to bring against Tennessee related to NIL. We appreciate your staff listening to our arguments and agreeing to evaluate them. The NCAA's allegations are factually untrue and procedurally flawed. Moreover, it is intellectually dishonest for your enforcement staff to pursue infractions cases as if student athletes have no NIL rights and as if institutions pay attention here, have all been functioning post Alston with a clear and unchanging set of rules and willfully violating them. You notice what she said there? Um, naturally, she responded that way because that's how you have to deal with these people. Now, when I say things like that, if you're new to college athletics, if you just decided you're going to be a college sports fan in the past year, let's say college football, basketball, whatever. You may come in on like chapter 18 of the book and you may be watching this play out saying, what's this woman's problem? If they broke rules, certainly they have to be punished, right? I wanna encourage you guys. You um, would probably serve your best interest to zoom way, way out on this thing. <laughs> Independent of whatever comes out with Tennessee. I don't care if you're a Bama fan and you hate these people with every fiber of your being. I don't care if you're a Georgia fan. I don't care. You need to zoom it out for the greater good because this is, this is like the coyote wandering the neighborhood. Oh, the coyote got the neighbor's cat last night. I didn't like that cat anyway. You really need to go after the coyote because it's going to come for yours the next night. Yep. These people will eventually come for yours. Hey, uh, look, I think I think Colorado, I think, don't quote me, I think Colorado again hit. You know, just because NIL is, is such a, it's so new, it's so recent. Like, people are still figuring out ways to, they testing the system. They want to see what they can get away with. There aren't any hardcore rules related to NIL. Not really. It's a lot of flex. It's a lot of bend in there. So, it's, if you leave a crease, you give them an inch, people are going to take a mile. So unless you want to, you know, enforce these rules with fidelity and consistently, then you, you, know, you don't have a lick to stand on.
You just don't. You are in a world, as Dondi Plowman said, where you have not had a clear and unchanging set of rules, and you haven't been willfully violating them in some cases. It's just been, uh, you, you got one set the one day and then another set the next day, and so uh, who in the world knows how to operate? Remember Tez Walker? They don't want you to, so I'm going to remind you. I remember Tez Walker. Remember how I sat at this desk uh, leading into the 2023 college football season, and there was this receiver that was set to play for North Carolina. And he had only played at one other university through some weird transfer stuff. He had transferred multiple times, but he had never played anywhere other than Kent State. And he transfers to North Carolina, and everyone assumes he's going to be eligible. And then the NCAA all of a sudden just decides, no, he's not eligible. And everyone's beside themselves. What are you talking about? Then North Carolina appeals. And then we wait and wait and wait, and we're week of the game. We're 72 hours, 48 hours, 24 hours away from the game. North Carolina announces he's not going to be able to play week one. NCAA upholds their um, decision to not make him eligible. And then weeks into the season, all of a sudden he's eligible. And you know what they had the audacity to say? They had the audacity to say, well, you should have filed your paperwork right the first time. Like that's, that's what happened. What really happened is legal minds who are not only capable of matching wits, but more so capable of playing whack-a-mole with the NCAA got involved. And they realized, oh, we actually don't have a leg to stand on. We're kind of sort of screwing this kid. And even if we do have nomenclature that we can hide behind, is our entire purpose not to serve a student athlete? Is, is our, in other words, is our entire purpose not to help this kid find a way to get eligible if there is a way? So anyway... And that's like, they should award him an, an, an additional year. Uh, if, they, if they waited halfway through the season to make this man eligible, they kind of burnt the year for him. He, I'm pretty sure he wasn't able to practice with the, the ones and get involved with, you know, the real intricacies of that, that, that team because you're not eligible. So you can't get those reps. You can't get those that, that relationship with your your players on that side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball. So the NCAA has to be consistent, man. They have to be consistent. Like we got players that's on their eighth, ninth year in college. How? How did you get past five? How? How did you do it? You know, it's players that's playing seven years. That's that's an extra year after the COVID year. So it's just we got to get some consistency within the NCAA if you're really going to try to enforce these rules and these procedures especially with NIL with all this big money being thrown around, we have got to narrow this thing down and, and operate with some fidelity. I want you to remember that because it was that night. It was that that finally was my last straw. I don't know what yours is or if you've had yours yet, but that was my last straw. Some of you may say it took you that long. <laughs> well, I held out hope. But there is no hope for this organization. They are a hopeless people. And we are as well as a college football public if we are continuing to depend on them for enforcement. In no merit-based world do these people have jobs. It's never, it's never the case in a merit-based world. Imagine for a second you work in construction. I've done this before. Imagine you work in construction and you show up to the job site one week and there's your schematic and there's the overall blueprint and here, here's lumber here and here's HVAC and then the next Monday you show up, the plans have changed. And yet, what are we going to do? Well, we can't reverse what we already built, so I, I guess we're just going to kind of go by these plans now. Then you show up the next Monday, and you got a whole new set of HVAC instructions, and you got a new angle that they want the ceiling built at, and you have no choice but to keep going. You're working on a deadline, and fast forward six months, the house is built, and then the inspector shows up and says, this house doesn't look right. I'm going to punish you. <clears throat> what would you do? Anyone in their right mind would say, well, you kind of put us in an impossible situation because the rules kept changing. Right. That's what Dondi Plowman's saying. Saying, you fools actually have the audacity to change the rules at the 11th hour of every day and then look at us and think we're supposed to enforce it. And by the way, it's not just like, like wind direction changing. Okay, that's as simple as south, southwest, and north, northeast, and the mm -hmm. end. In this world, please understand, these are entire major organizations that you're trying to run. And so if you change guidelines today on January 30th, 
I have to then completely restructure my organization or my player personnel or my NIL or my recruiting department, and I'm hopefully building and then I'm hiring to build a structure to adhere to your guidelines. And that's a, that's a six to 12 month process. And then eight months into it, you change the guidelines again. Mm -hmm. And all the while, you're telling me some rules got broken? You're telling me some corners got cut? That's not the problem. I'm pro-enforcement. I would love to see guidelines on this whole thing. These aren't the people to do it. Is her point? Is my point? Is everyone's point? Which brings me to my next point, and that is, what's Greg Sankey got to say about this? I assume he's not going to step to a podium in Birmingham anytime soon and have the SEC commissioner's office speaking out on this, but he's got to have something to say about it. The, the conference at the league office has to have something to say about this because they're not anti-enforcement either. In fact, I think there's probably a world not too far down the road where conferences police themselves a whole lot more strictly and effectively than the NCAA ever has been able to. I'm not sure when that happens, but most informed people in the industry think that's where we're headed. Are we really ever going to get to a point in this investigation or any major investigation forthcoming where a league office like the SEC or the Big Ten allows the NCAA to come down on one of their member institutions in a world that was de facto created to be as big a mess as it is because of the very body that is investigating and handing down punishment. Mm -hmm. Are they really going to let that happen? I don't think so. Some people said today, well, what about the Michigan situation? The Michigan situation, regardless of what you thought about it, that's totally different. That's not an infraction that's related to recruiting at NIL. That's its own different universe over right. here. And we've talked about that a lot on the, the show. Science still in. And, uh, if Michigan were being investigated like they were before, I'm not talking about the stallion stuff, but like they were before, I would be an advocate for Michigan as a university, hardlining against the NCAA, which they didn't do, by the way, and I thought it was very short-sighted of them, and a lot of their fan base has come to agree with that. you got to handle these people at the NCAA like Donnie Plowman in Tennessee did today, and anyone else moving forward that these people try and come down on and actually have the audacity to try and punish for things they did in an environment that was, that was created to be a mess by the very folks investigating you. you got to shoot back. you got to fire back at them. It's not hard to match wits with them. These aren't talented people. That's why they have the jobs they have to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it's not that hard to match wits with them. Just stop being scared. It is a tiger. It's just a paper tiger. You don't have to fear these people. And it is my belief that long before a hammer actually drops on Tennessee, the SEC league office will step in on this. I maybe think they won't need to because it sounds like Tennessee has their ducks in a row on this. Um, but should the situation arise. I don't think Greg Sankey and the SEC are going to allow it. Now, that opens a whole new can of worms if we were to get to that point. And I understand that, and we don't have time for that on tonight's show. But the NCAA investigating Tennessee. All right. We'll probably have more to say about that. So, this is how I see it. The NCAA is pretty much turning into, well, especially, especially for football, it's turning into a junior league, a developmental league where you paying players and all that stuff. So to me, I think that they need to adopt some of the procedures that the NFL has. Like NFL doesn't make a whole bunch of sweeping changes in the middle of the season. They set their rules for the year and then they see what happens. If they need to make an adjustment, they'll come back to the table after the season. You can't start the season with one set of rules guidelines and procedures and then once this, we get to week 10 you say okay we got a new set of rules guidelines and procedures right and but we're going to penalize you for all the rules you broke in the past against these new rules guidelines and procedures so i believe that they're going to have to implement some type of system where they set hard rules and those coaches has have to abide by the, those coaches those institutions those players have to abide by those rules, right? And they have to make adjustments along the way. Adjustments, not along the way, but adjustments every season, all right? Like every year you see the NFL make rule changes to this, to that, to this, to that. So 
then the NCAA need to adopt. If they don't have that already, don't 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 have all the information on NCAA and their rules and stuff. I ain't and listen, man, I ain't here for all that. But if they don't, if they don't have these things in place, they need to just mimic some of the things they're doing in the NFL, right? And set the rules, monitor, and see what needs to be adjusted every year. Cause especially with NIL, it's, it's new, it's fresh, it's recent. You don't know what people are going to find different ways to skirt around the rules. And you, and you as that institution, have to uh, put those parameters up. Say, so okay, so Tennessee bent the rules this way. All right, next, let's implement, a, let's, let's, let's make an adjustment for that. Just like as educators, we set rules when we start the school year, and then we get kids that come in, and they know how to bend those rules. So, get what we got to do. We got to put in a new rule. Now, obviously, as an educator, we put those rules in the next day, so we ain't going to wait to the end of the year. But when it deals with money and stuff like that, you can come on, man. You got to be, you got to operate with some type of uh, fidelity and uh, integrity. Hey, man, set your rules and adjust afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So, that's all I got. Yeah, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. I'm out.